scholarship, just the way I want to pass on a legacy of education. I would like to pass PBS on to the next generation. I like to think that PBS is concerned with our soul. If your soul is in the right place, you're in giving back. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors, and are not those of WKYU-TV, its management, or WKU. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of Topper Talk. And unlike uh, some recruits on signing day, our mothers did not run off with our national letters of intent. <laughs> we have signed on to do the second episode of Topper Talk, here to bring you quality Hilltopper Sports Talk for the next 30 minutes. I am Sean Williams, along with Shane Bearden, Woody White, and uh, there's somebody missing. Where did this guy go? Did we kick him out already? To, uh, yeah. I mean, after one episode. I guess his family a little more important than Topper <laughs> Talk to him this week. He's just been a nice little family vacation in Adam, Florida. Hey, we dug deep into our pockets, though. Yeah, well, well let me get to the Adam. No, no. Adam Haley's usually here, uh, uh, but he's in vacation, on vacation in Florida right now, soaking up some sun, doing some fishing. Uh, deep sea fish and stuff like that. Wayne. But go ahead, Shane. I mean, we dug deep down in our pockets to get a special guest today. We got uh, old man Taiteo's ex girlfriend in the house. Lene Kakua? <laughs> yeah. Lene She's Kakua. Here. Th- welcome to the show, Lene. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Are you a little nervous for your first TV appearance? <laughs> you should be, yeah. <laughs> first TV appearance. She's a little nervous. She's got what? Well, that's fake water over there for her. Yeah. But. Uh, Lene, I know you're a little biased because you used to date <laughs> Notre Dame's ex linebacker, but I mean, do you really honestly think Notre Dame deserved to be in the national title game? I, yeah, I didn't think so. Do you think that Western played Notre Dame or played Alabama better than Notre Dame did? She's not I think s- she said yes she's to not that saying one. Much. I think she shook her head, though. I think she shook <laughs> her head. Well, Lene, you can uh, continue to hang out. Uh, make yourself at home. Uh, drink out of the nice little Western Tarvis cups and uh, enjoy the show. We'll ask for your opinions throughout the show. And uh, So what do you want to get started, fellas? Uh, what, what, what happened well, last week? Big news last week has to be the National Signing Day. I know nothing about that. Nothing at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, National Signing Day, a uh, pretty big day for Western. Uh, got a ton of kids. A lot of kids. Uh, 25 on Wednesday to go along with the eight early enrollees that are already on campus. Um, a lot of that, you know, Petrino said, you know, that was a lot of depth issues. Uh, when he got here, there were 76 scholarship players. So uh, those eight early enrollees were really crucial, especially along the defensive and offensive lines for uh, spring practice and everything. So, yeah. I mean, you got a lot of kids. You got, I mean, to break it down, I mean, you got eight offensive linemen in the class, uh, six wide receivers, six D linemen, four linebackers, and six defensive backs. Uh, that goes along with one quarterback, one tight end, and one very important, crucial kicker. Joe uh, the Kicker. Yeah, Joe the, ki- Joe the Kicker. Is that what we're going to call him? <laughs> That's what I'm going with. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that last you can't name. pronounce it, it's Acapini, okay? I like it. Acapini, okay. Uh, but anyway, a, a monster class, like I said, eight offensive linemen. Um, of course, one of the big things that Petrino stressed was uh, skill, you know, depth and speed at the skill positions, mm-hmm. which I think they did a, a good job of, especially at wide receiver. Now, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you got you got six wideouts in this class. And if you think about it, during Taggart's, uh, Taggart's time here, I mean, wideouts probably the most underutilized position yeah. during his time here. I mean, what do you guys think about the the wide receivers in this class? Oh, yeah. there's It's it's loaded with talent. I mean, you look at, at uh, people like Action Jackson. Mr. Aaron Action Jackson. <laughs> and uh, Taewon Taylor uh, out of PRP, who I really liked uh, looking at his highlight video. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it is just a highlight video, uh, but, uh, you know. It's supposed to highlight your talents. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's exactly what it does. <laughs> but uh, two guys that, uh, that have good size, good speed, good hands. And, uh, you know, and then you think about the receivers that we still have here with uh, Willie McNeil and uh, – um, some of the other guys, and you know, it, it looks like it'll be a good, 
good wide receiver core next year. Definitely gonna have plenty of weapons. That's oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Katrina likes for sure. You look at the class this year. I mean, in the in the wide receivers, just kind of still specifying on that. You got a you know local kids. You got Cam Lewis from Louisville, Ballard. You got Taiwan mm-hmm. Taylor, like you were mentioning, PRP. Aaron Jackson from Frankfurt. So you got a lot of local uh, local kids on the wide receiver core here. That's right. And it's like you said. Um, you know, like I was saying it. Wide receivers usually underutilized during Taggart's there because you look at the stats every game. Your wide receiver or your leading receiver is going to be either a tight end or a running back. So I mean, uh, you know, wide receiver is going to flourish in this offense. And like like you were saying, Shane, we got we already got some talented receivers that I think will flourish under Petrino's system. And and Petrino talked about you know their big emphasis with this recruiting class was getting size <laughs> and speed both. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's one thing they were able to uh, to accomplish. They did a good job. Uh, you know, like I said. You know, a place like Western, where a Sun Belt Conference team, we're not going to get like four or five star kids. I mean, right. let's just be honest. Uh, but a lot of good mixture of two star, three star kids, and you know, some even some not rated kids that are diamonds in the rough. I mean, you know, and, and I'd rather have kids like that that can come in, have a good head on their shoulders, and are coachable, and uh, you know, can become great players. I, I think we've done well with that too, is getting players that may have that chip on their shoulder mm-hmm. too for not being recruited by some of the big schools. Like, I mean. You know, I look at the Kentucky kids, especially. Maybe if they didn't get a look from UK or U of L, they can come here and you know get to play Kentucky, and you know hopefully maybe get to play U of L sometime down the road. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, um, you know getting that little extra motivation, you know I think that's always a good thing for them. Yeah, and uh, well, I mean with Petrino here, you know I'm not as worried about UK and U of L as they should be. I mean they should be more worried oh, about absolutely. Western stealing their recruits with Petrino in house. Yeah, I mean Western Louisville is <laughs> turning into Bowling Green 2.0 with all the recruits <laughs> we're pulling out of there. <laughs> but uh, and that's that's something uh, you know if talking to recruits and stuff like that, which is what we do. And you check out all the national recruiting stuff on InsideHilltoppersports.com. That's our website. You can check that out for uh, all Western Kentucky information. But talking to a lot of the recruits, I mean, especially the wide receivers, I mean, they're super excited to play in this offense. So, I mean, that's a major selling point for Western, having Petrino here and having Jeff Brom here, who also worked with Petrino up at Louisville. So, and we got some mammoth offensive linemen in the class, too. Though. We got some beef. We got some, some beef for sure. Beef. Protecting the quarterback so those wide receivers can get those catches. That, that would be the main focus right there. Um, of course, you know, receivers, you know, under Taggart, he did a lot of – motion offense a lot of running uh with petrino it's going to be five you know you're going to see five wide at times and so you know receivers going to be really important especially the slot receivers too you know and i think i think as talented as uh antonio andrews is you could see him going out to uh to being a slot receiver uh on occasion too oh, yeah uh, just to keep him involved in the offense you know uh when you have those five wide receiver sets you know just having him go out as a slot receiver you know, and a lot of people are talking, you know, the rumor, the rumor mill is, oh, well, he's going to, Andrew's going to graduate this year and, and transfer down to South Florida and, you know, be down there with Taggart. But you know what? Antonio Andrews is made for this offense. I mean, he's he's a dynamic running back. He can catch balls out of the backfield. Exactly what Petrino wants. Well, absolutely. You know, I, you know, I watched a lot of those little teams when, like, Michael Bush was up there playing. And, mm-hmm. you know, Antonio doesn't necessarily have the size of Michael Bush. But I think from as far as the skill set, as far as catching the ball and, you know, running downhill hard, I think Antonio is a little bit in that mold. And I think, you know, he could definitely thrive in this offense. I know he was – there was some skepticism of how much carries he would get and all that. But, you know, I think he's definitely going to play a huge part. And that's, I'm excited to see what he can do. Well, and sure. everybody always talks about the wide receivers benefiting from the Petrino offense. But, you know, Petrino himself – said that you know he believes in running the football and Mm -hmm. you know you can't you can't pass if you don't establish the run either and so I mean Antonio is still going to get some carries and he's going to get uh he's probably going to get more receiving yards this year would be my guess but I mean he's still going to get you know his bulk of carries and I think you know I think he'll put up good numbers again this year. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, it's like you were saying, there's a misperce- misconceived notion that Petrino's just all pass all the time. But you got to think, like you said earlier, he had Michael Bush while he was at Louisville. I mean, also Kobe had, Smith, our running backs coach, yeah, he started he had for him, the Kansas City Chiefs for a few games. And, then. and uh, he, had, he had a little cup of tea with the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when Petrino was at Arkansas, I mean, you got to think he had Nile Davis too. He was considered yeah. one of the SEC's best running backs two or three years ago. So, I mean, you know, he's going to rely a lot on, you know, it, it spread him out, but he's also going to run the ball too. And running is going to be a big emphasis for this team. It's going to be sure. more of a passing offense for sure, but the running back is going to be really valuable too. Uh, which, by the way, we did not have any running backs in this class, but we're pretty stacked at running back, wouldn't you guys say? Oh yeah, definitely I mean, got some depth. Leon Allen, uh, Marquis Sumler, Marquis Sumler. Ace Wales still Ace in the Wales, fold. Yep. Yep. still come back. That's a lot of. That's a kid that a lot of 
lot of people, Hilltopper fans, are uh, anxiously waiting to see you appear in a Hilltopper uniform. So, uh, so you guys got anything else? I mean, you you guys got a specific recruit that you uh, you guys like want to talk about? I know Petrino was excited about this Shaquille Johnson, the, the one tight end in the class, a big kid that can then run fast. I, I'm always partial to the bigger guys, personally being 6'8 myself. I don't I, know why. I, I like mean. to kind of picture myself <laughs> in that mold a little bit, a big guy that can be a little athletic. You know, you so uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little partial to him. I'm looking, looking forward to see what a nice athletic tight end. Not that nothing wrong with Jack or Mitchell Henry, but – you know, they're more the possession guys. I mean, the tight end that can get out there and burn some linebackers and get open down the middle of the field, that, that excites me. And, you know, Petrino's put – he's got a tight end in the NFL right now from Louisville, uh, Gary Barnage, that plays for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm just excited to see the talent going to be on the field. I'm ready for some spring ball to get rolling for sure. Yeah, you talk about Shaquille Johnson. I mean, we lose Jack Doyle, uh, so we kind of replace him with this Shaquille mm-hmm. Johnson kid. He's six foot four, 215 pounds, out of uh, Columbia High School in Florida. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty talented according to his highlight videos. And he's got soft hands, uh, run routes really well. So uh, he's going to be a big cog. I mean, I think Mitchell Henry and everybody. You got Tim Gorski too. Yeah, uh, they're going to be big parts of the tight end offense. But you know, you lose. You lose a talent like Jack Doyle, you gain a talent like Shaquille Johnson, you can mode for the future. So That's right. Uh, what about you, Shane? Pick somebody out. Man, I, I just got to – We got a quarterback. set on one person. Got a I got to talk about the talk whole about the wide receiver crew. Oh, okay, go ahead. I mean, I, the, the entire <laughs> wide receiver class is just – I mean, it's stacked with height and speed and uh, good hands. I mean, you know, they're – I think we'll be looking at uh, – some good talent for years to come on the hill out of this class. Yeah, and uh, speaking of the wide receivers, a uh, smaller wide receiver, uh, Colin Towner. He's out of St. Paul's down in Mobile, Alabama. He's five foot nine, 185, but this kid is blazing fast. And uh, a big thing he will probably do is uh, be a good asset on the kick return game. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of his highlight videos. I mean, he is burning it down the sidelines on those kick returns, punt return specialist too. So I think he'll be a big factor in a couple of years, not just wide receiver-wise, but special teams-wise as well. So, What about you, Sean? Single somebody out. Me? Well, I mean, hey, look, we're talking about this quarterback, uh, you know, battle here um you got todd porter i mean you went out and got a kid from illinois uh o'fallon six foot three 180 um you know he's known more to be a pocket passer he had, he had over three thousand yards but he can also run too um running's kind of you know he's not like a dual threat he wouldn't be considered a dual threat he only had about close to 300 yards rushing but he can escape and get out of situations and uh you know run down the field and gain a lot of yards um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Bobby Petrino spoke pretty highly of this kid. And, uh, you know, he might come in here and make a little noise. And, you know, by by the time fall runs around, uh, you know, he might be the starting quarterback. Just saying, guys. Just saying. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we also have we also have There's more. There's good quarterbacks on the roster already, There too, is good though. quarterback. I'm just hey, I'm it's gonna throwing, be, it's I'm gonna throwing be out a prediction, man. I'm throwing out a prediction. I mean, that's fine. You can, you can predict all you want. I mean, it's just a hey, – <laughs> Always enjoy a good position battle. It'll be, it'll yeah, be fun to watch. It'll be a hot battle. So, But, yeah, I mean, you know, for more information on the class and everything, I mean, go check out all the information on InsideHilltopperSports.com. So what do you guys want to talk about now? I mean, well, speaking there of football, couple. I mean, there is that Twitter battle between Arkansas and WKU going <laughs> oh, on right yeah. now. I mean, will you guys want to weigh in on that, any? I mean, if it's true. I, mean, I don't know what Arkansas's facilities look like. but uh, well, I don't know what you know, they look like when Petrino got there. Yeah, but, I don't uh, either. But uh, <laughs> apparently, for those of you that don't know about this uh, Twitter battle, what happened was uh, on uh, – Friday, uh, Coach Petrino went on a three-hour lunch radio show in Nashville. Um, they asked him about uh, Western's facilities compared to Arkansas's when he arrived in Arkansas, and uh, he said Western's were by far better. So uh, that spurred a little uh, debate uh, from uh, Arkansas fans. Got them all uh, riled up, man. Coming on uh, Twitter, uh, taking to uh, smack-talking Western fans a little bit. So uh, that's that. <laughs> Everybody enjoys some Twitter smack talk, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, the smack talk has continued today, and it's, you know, getting kind of ridiculous. There can't be much better things to do in Arkansas. I mean, I've been to Hot Springs. If the rest of the state compares to that, then well, it's like Twitter fights might be the best thing to do down there. It's like the way most uh, Twitter fights happen. It's from a quote that was read wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Petrino said, of course, that he was comparing Western's facilities to Arkansas whenever he got to Arkansas. So it's probably a little bit different story now at Arkansas. So that's just kind of a funny battle that is going on right now on Twitter. 
Uh, we had a couple of basketball games last week. Well, what um, about those basketball games? First one looked good. Uh, went on the road to uh, Denton. Uh, Super pit. Yep. Took out North Texas uh, by double digits, 70 to 59. Uh, top shot. Pretty well from the field. Uh, just played a pretty good all-around game, yep. and uh, then came back to Bowling Green and laid a big goose egg. What about that goose egg, Woody? Woody, come I, on! I didn't get to watch the game Saturday night. I was working, unfortunately. I had it on the radio in the background. What's your impressions? Your ears from what you heard, though. from what I heard on the radio, <laughs> things sounded very stagnant. I guess would be the good word. Uh, I think that's a good word I choice. Think, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Just looking at the box score and listening to what I was saying, just things didn't seem to go our way. I don't know if it was just lack of energy. I had obviously not getting to see the game, but um, I was frustrated listening on the radio. I can only imagine what that would have been like being in, in Diddle for the game. I'm, I'm sure I would have left pretty upset. I mean, it was, you know, we had uh, the largest crowd of the season at Diddle, too, yeah. with uh, over 5,800 in attendance. And, uh, and Dennis Felton. And Dennis Felton, yes. Yeah. And uh, I think with the way the tops played, you know, when when you have that big of a crowd show up, and you know, you you got to put on your your best game so you can get those people to come back and uh, put butts in the seats. And if you you play like that with the largest crowd of the season, you know, a lot of people, a lot of those people probably won't be back for the rest no. of the year. Yeah. And that's a, I mean, a pretty big game too. I mean, Arkansas State's one of our better rivals in the Sun Belt. You know, they've, had, they've gave us some good games over the past few years. And, you know, I remember they the always shoot hot against us. too. Trey Finn, for those of y'all that have gotten to watch him over the past few years, there was a game, I think his freshman year, he was averaging four points and he went off for 32 points against us. And it kind of sounded like he did the same sort of thing Saturday. Not quite yeah, as many was, points, but he was uh, displaying the art of three point he, mastery. Uh, I'm not going to be sad to see him go. <laughs> he can go ahead and graduate as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we, uh, you know, of course, Western, they, you know, celebrated the all diddle team in the 2002-2003 NCAA tournament team so I think a lot of fans in attendance were uh, daydreaming and reminiscing back to the the glory days of 10 years ago so uh, had a lot of people leaving early but uh, yeah it was a you know just kind of a just a Jekyll and Hyde week for Western basketball but I think the big thing out of it uh, post game was that Harper saying that uh, Crook was a little hobbled and you know we all could tell that watching the game uh, so I think that him coming back from the injury, playing the game Thursday and then playing the game Saturday obviously affected him. So um, it would be good to get a few days off for him yeah. and kind of get him healthy again. Because so, I'll tell you what, he's going to be the key. I mean, you know, he's going to be the key to the success yeah, of the rest of the season. We're only going to go as far as he can take us. Cause, yeah. And I love the other point guards we've got. But, you know, we've got to have a healthy Jamal playing at as near to 100% as possible to get where we want to go. Oh, I agree with that. I mean, he's he's the catalyst to uh, to us getting lane penetration for the yep. most part. I mean, without him, you know, we we struggle to get into the lane and, and draw fouls or, or dish out for open yep. shots. And uh, you, you could tell that. Like you said, you know, our offense kind of becomes stagnant without him out there running. And that's nothing against Brandon Harris or Kevin Kaspar, but, you know, they – are not. I mean, Jamal's a four-year starter yeah. at this point. You know, he was what he was when he came in, but you know, he's been a big part of this team for the past few years. And this is the, I, the way I look at it. This is his team. Uh, you know, being one of the few seniors and um, him and Tang, I guess. Hopefully, they can get a little motivated over these next few games and try to go out on a high note. Yeah, and I mean, you could tell that Saturday too, because you had uh, the only guard or the only player that looked like showed up for Western was uh, T.J. Price, who had 21 points. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the rest of the guards only had combined for 10 points and two assists. And, I mean, same for the low post game. I mean, Fan had a decent game. He had 8.6 boards. But he was, I mean, he was in foul trouble. Yeah. Um, I mean, for a large part of the wasn't game. a lot of low post presence. Rostov only played 10 minutes, had zero points. I mean, no production out of him. So, uh, you know, a lot of struggles. And, and you can tell whenever Crook's not in the game or whenever he's injured that the offense just doesn't seem to be clicking. So... It's going to be interesting to see the way things go this week, you know, going on the Florida road trip, playing at Atlantic on Thursday night, and then at FIU, who, other than MTSU, is probably the best team in the Sun Belt right now. I mean, South Alabama's playing all right, but FIU's gotten pretty hot, and Richard Pitino's gotten things yeah. rolling down there. So uh, it's going to be a tough road trip. You know, and FIU, we're going to have to handle that full full court press that yeah. they throw at us, too, that Petrino-style defense. Petrino? I mean, not Petrino. Petrino. It's getting your peak. I'm still thinking Petino's football, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After that basketball week. Speaking of MTSU, did you see the score? They uh, the whooping they laid on Troy yeah, the other night. It was ugly. It was pretty impressive. Fifty-one I mean, point win. 
Okay. That doesn't happen in the Sun Belt very and often. Troy's women upsetting uh, MTSU's women. That yeah. may be the more surprising. kind of a shock. Yeah, I don't know. Speaking much of that, speaking though. of women's sports, what do you got? Anything on the women's yeah, basketball? Yeah, women's front? basketball. They're they're still they're rolling right along. Um, some some people were worried that we might have hit a wall uh, there for a few weeks with as few players as we have. But you know, we came out last Thursday and got a good win at North Texas. Had had a tough game Saturday night at home against Arkansas State. Um, they're a solid team though. They're one of the better teams in the West Division. So uh, you know, we're still sitting right there in that two seed from for our division. Probably gonna be right behind MTSU in the East, and you know things are looking pretty well there. They they've got the same Florida road trip this week, and um, should be two wins. FIU will be a little tougher. They've got Jerrica Coley, who's one of the better players in the Sun Belt, and um, uh, if we can go ahead and get these two wins down there, three of our last four games are at home, and of course, just like the men, they finish out the season with Middle Tennessee, and um, I think the women had their highest attended game Saturday as well, with about yeah. 2,400 or so that were there, and I, I would love to see them get a, a huge crowd for that MTSU game, because that's, you know, the ladies have been working super hard this year, and, you know, they've, they've done well. I don't think anybody saw this kind of performance coming out of them. I don't and, think anybody did, um, not after the season they had last year, and, you know, yeah, for sure. having so many uh, newcomers to the team, and, you know, I, I just thought I don't think anybody saw this coming, but uh, Tiffany Gooch has been a monster in the low post. She, she's still leading the country in double doubles. You know, I got a whole right little grudge from her because she's from Franklin, you know, being from Russellville. But you know, whatever. She's she's a solid player. She um got she's po- got a big poster of her up in your room. No, no, no. Okay. Just <laughs> her and uh, her and Alexis Govan and Bianca McGee. You know, they've been just been killing it. You know, they're putting up close to twenty points a game over the past few weeks between the three or. Each of them doing that. So if they can keep that rolling and, you know, uh, get some contribution for other girls, which they've been doing, <laughs> they uh, they should have a good rest of the season. You know, I look for them to do pretty well in Hot Springs, too. I think, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for any, either team, any men or women team to beat MTSU. But uh, I'd like to see uh, our ladies get a shot at them again in Hot Springs, definitely. Yeah, I mean, pretty amazing that, you know, I mean, I guess – I guess it's good team chemistry. You don't have a lot of players on that team, and and they're playing well, no phenomenal. No seniors on the team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Cheney Means is a junior. She's the oldest one. And, I mean, you know, they you know, just and they pretty, fight for each other and they get after it. Pretty amazing, you know. I, I, you know, like you're saying, you expect a big crowd for middle, and you know, you, you hope there is a big crowd to send off both the men's and women's basketball teams. Sure. I mean, the women are very deserving for a big send off, a home send off yeah, for them for what they've done all year. Watch these women play, man. Come on, guys, Come on. get out here, <laughs> support the women's <laughs> basketball team. They've been uh, definitely overachieving all year. I mean, they've been playing well, so that's been a big surprise, and uh, you know, definitely a lot of people happy for them and their success. So, yep. And then, uh, let's see, we got uh, baseball kicking off. Baseball starts off this weekend. One of my favorite times on the hill. I, I love going out to Nick Dennis Field and just watching baseball games. You know, it's it's good times whether, whether we've got a good team or not. You know, just going out, being outside, watching baseball. You know, I love it. It's America's pastime, whatever, you know. So, um, I'm excited about it. We open up this weekend. That's um, – it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold, probably. <laughs> a little unfortunate way to start the season. But, you know, hopefully some fans will be out there and watch. And uh, I think it'll be a good time. They uh, the, the guys are predicted to be seventh in the, in the preseason out of ten Sunbelt teams that play baseball. So not necessarily where we'd like to be at. But I think uh, a lot of people are probably underrating us. We had a tough year last year. But we've got a lot of, of good young and good new like junior college talent coming in this year. We returned basically all our pitching. I think that's going to be the big thing. If uh, if Tanner Perkins, who's one of our better returning pitchers, if he's healthy and ready to go, and he's a he can be a dominant pitcher at times when he wants to be. He's one of the better talents I've seen here in the few years I've been coming to games. So if he can uh, if he's on top of his game and healthy and getting things rolling, I think uh, we should have a pretty good shot to be you know right there competing for a conference championship, which is you know ultimately where we want to be for sure. So what are the big uh, the big baseball games going to go on at Hot Rod Stadium this year? We got, we got yeah, Louisville, Louisville Kentucky? and UK. Louisville and UK. Both the cast decided to come Green back and play us at Hot Rod Stadium. That's good. Even though uh, they always get demolished. <laughs> that, that game there a couple years ago, we beat them like 24-2 or whatever it was. That was so much fun. I was there, fun. and that was a blast. <laughs> yeah, I always good. love uh, beating UK in, in anything. And their baseball team this year is going to be solid. They're probably looking yeah. at having like a top 10 they kind of team. Had, they had so. a good team last year, yeah. too. Louisville's always pretty good as well, so those are two pretty big games we'll have. Awesome. Open up this weekend with uh, with Bowling Green State. So if y'all are in town, got something to do, and the weather's not too brutal, come on out to Nick Dennis Field. It's going to be good times. Hopefully I'll be able to be there. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we got some tweets. You guys want to get interactive on the tweets here? And before we do, <laughs> let's talk about these tables and chairs, which are proudly provided by the Jasper Group, by the way. So shout out to them for providing the nice tables and Love chairs guys, here for the, the studio. We appreciate it. Uh, let's, let's get to these tweets here. Come on. 
Well, for one, uh, you know, last week we talked a little about uh, WKU alums, you know, doing things in the pros. Mm -hmm. um, one of those alums, obviously, is uh, huh. Jeremy Evans, who plays for Dunk Contest. Uh, he's going to be in the dunk contest this Saturday, once again, defending his crown. Um, it should be a good dunk contest this year. They got uh, got a lot of good athletes. Uh, they got a former uh, dunk contest winner in Gerald Green. Uh, got James Flight White, uh, UK uh, player, uh, and Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. Um, Kenneth Freed, who played just down the road in Moorhead State. Uh, you know, it should should be a good. It's gonna be a good one for sure. A good one. Not so, a lot of the big names in the NBA, but a lot of guys that can you know, really throw can down. Can really a get bit, up so. in there. The big names don't want to compete in a slam dunk contest because they're afraid of good showing up. Uh, plain and simple. I mean, how many prop dunks are there gonna be? I mean, what are your predictions on the dunks? Is somebody gonna be? I mean, they'll, they're yeah. It's, it's turned into one big. Uh, it's not just about you know who pulls off the best dunk now. It's turned into a, a prop show too. Is somebody, somebody gonna be show, yeah. juggling a couple of chihuahuas and trying to reverse a dunk or something at the same time? I mean. <laughs> be a good idea. Yeah, I, we should text it. Jeremy that. I'm, <laughs> I'm honestly a big, a bigger fan of the uh, more traditional power slam. Come up with something creative, but not like really uh, jump over a Kia kind yeah. of dunk guy. I not just don't like that. It doesn't really appeal to me at all. I like the old school. Uh, I like the old school showdowns. With Jeremy would never jump over a Kia. If anything, he would jump <laughs> he over would a Camaro or something. He would, Oh, like would something he, better. could he jump over an 18 wheeler though? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, just saying. I might have gave him an idea. There you go. I don't he'd know if to, he'd have to get like full like extension to get over that. Here's an idea. I mean, since these guys can jump so high, why don't we just have them jump off trampolines and see what happens? I mean, I think that'd be pure comedy I don't know right if any there. Western fans will remember this, but back in the day, like early 90s, and Diddle used to have the Budweiser dunk team come mm -hmm. in. Yeah, and they would jump off trampolines. That was. I was like a six-year-old then. It blew my mind watching guys do like flips and all this stuff through there, and then dunk. And I couldn't figure out how they weren't hitting their faces on the backboards. But it was <laughs> could, awesome. I yeah, but it. could you imagine NBA players jumping off a trampoline, six foot eleven or something? Blake Griffin like on a trampoline. I don't see think. That, I don't. I think that would turn into comedy more than it yeah, would. Yeah, uh, I think it would too. Which would that be would, awesome. That would even the playing field a little. Too I really much think that though. would probably be the best slam dunk contest ever. If you're going to talk trampolines, be. you got to bring up Slam Ball real quick. I don't know if anybody slam ever watched Slam Ball on Spike TV. That's the coolest sport ever. I yeah, thought I could actually be pretty good at that. It lasted a while. Actually, yeah, we probably could have excelled in Slam Ball. I mean, it made white guys have nice verticals. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Y'all want to talk any more about Slam Ball? Who was the best Slam Ball player? I just I remember one no of the I remember watching like maybe two slam ball games. There was ever. a there was a dunk that one dude did that was called the McNasty, and I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I tried it in my like on my trampoline that I had. Tried to do a flip with the ball between my legs. He tried it on his uh, tight little tight scale right. at home <laughs> for sure. Hey, I, back in the day when I was a kid, I used to grab a uh, five gallon bucket and and uh, set it up <laughs> and then jump off the five gallon bucket and dunk. That was pretty cool, man. Just saying. Old times. Bro. Another another idea for this year's slam dunk contest: five gallon bucket. <laughs> five gallon bucket. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, any any more slam dunk uh, slam slam ball <laughs> <laughs> observations? <laughs> Let's just right. go past that. <laughs> uh, your boy Kai. Just Kai wants me. If y'all know Kai Ramsey. Internet superstar. Me and him go way back. YouTube sports. YouTube sports. <laughs> he, uh, I know he's watching. What's up, Kaj? Uh, he says we should go cover the, the new papal uh, whatever election. I don't think that's what it's called. Um, at the Vatican. At the Vatican, yeah. yeah since the Pope's... I'm a big history nerd, so I'd love to go to the Vatican. But that would be nice. I'm, I'm not Catholic, so I can't speak to really anything that's going on there. Yeah. So. yeah. So, uh, and Kaj provides us with good entertainment, though, he on also Twitter. you were the best slam ball player ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Kaj. I mean, that's something. <laughs> that's, also, that's something to hold on to, for sure. Also, our, our missing uh, guy, thanks, Lene, for uh, sitting in for Adam. But Adam <laughs> Haley tweeted, tweeted at you, Woody, that you were yeah. actually six foot seven, and that you added an inch to the media guy. Adam doesn't want to admit that I'm really 6'8", but <laughs> that's what my driver's license says. I don't know what that means, but that's whatever. All right. And also, Adam says that I have a little poof in my hairstyle tonight. I dig it. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. I just did <laughs> Adam my watching all morning. the way from Florida tonight. Uh, apparently so. Apparently so. He's he's missing us. And he's, uh, I'm sure he is. If he's got nothing better to do in Florida than to watch us, <laughs> come on, Adam. <laughs> All right. I think you just wanted uh, to tune in to see uh, old man Tateo's girlfriend get a little um, peek. I mean, yeah. All right, you guys got any uh, shout-outs to give out? We're about to run out of time. Shout-outs. Shout-out to everybody. Keep on interacting on Twitter. Keep watching the show. Uh, we appreciate all of you. All right. Thank you, Lene Kaku, for sitting in for us. Go Tops. Go Tops. Talk. We're out. See ya. 
14 seconds to go. Give it up on the right to Gordon. Gordon across the timeline. 